Today we're going to be talking about the remainder and factor theorems. So the remainder theorem is if a polynomial is divided by a binomial, then the remainder is the same thing as the function being evaluated at that value. Okay? And this is called synthetic substitution. Okay? So I'm I'm making sure that it's x minus 3. I'm evaluating the function at 3 and I'm doing synthetic division to get that. So I know that p of 3 is equal to 7. So the factor theorem says, remember, this is the remainder. So if that function is evaluated at, our, at, this, at this value of 3, and our remainder ends up being 0, remainder 0, then we know that x minus r is a factor. OK, so let's use synthetic substitution to evaluate f of 6. So we do 6, I have a 2, I don't have an x to the third term, so I need to bring down the 0, I need to put a 0 there, 5, 8, and negative 7. So I bring down the 2, 2 times 6 is 12, I bring, I add, 12 times 6 is 72, I add those two to get 67, then I multiply 67 times 6 to get 410, I'm sorry, 402. Because then when I add, I get 410, then I multiply 410 by 6 to get 2,460, I add to get 2,453. So f of 6 is equal to 2,453. So that means that 6 is not a factor. Okay. Direct substitution, what we do is we would just evaluate that function at 6. So we would do 2 times 6 to the 4th minus 5 times 6 squared plus 8 times 6 minus 7. And when you go through all that math, you end up getting the same thing. Okay, so synthetic substitution is just a short way of evaluating a function. Okay, determine whether x minus 3 is a factor of that polynomial, then find the remaining factors. Okay, so I put, I go through my synthetic substitution or my synthetic division to determine whether or not it's a factor. Put my coefficients down. I don't need any placeholders, I just did a quick check of that. Bring down the 1, 3, 7, 21, that's going to be 6, 18. Remember, this last number is the factor, or the remainder. So yes, it is a factor, because our remainder ended up being 0. So remember, we started with an x cubed here. We reduce our exponent by 1, so this is x squared plus 7x plus 6. So we know that x to the third plus 4x squared minus 15x minus 18 is going to factor to x minus 3, because we got 0 as our remainder, and x squared plus 7x plus 6. Now, look and see, can this trinomial factor even more? This can factor even more. This can factor to x plus 6, x plus 1. Okay? So, we were able to factor this higher degree polynomial 
into something that's a little bit more manageable. Okay, find values of k so that the remainder is 5. So a few different ways that you could do this. I thought of synthetic substitution right away. So I put x minus 4, because remember you always need to change this to x minus a negative 4, and then put my coefficients. Now fill in. We need my remainder to be 5. I bring down my 1. 4, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Remember, we add those two numbers, so that's k minus 4. Then I take and I multiply k minus 4 times by a negative 4. So set up your equation. We know negative 3 plus the negative 4k plus 16 has to equal 5. So negative 4k plus 13 has got to equal 5. Negative 4k has got to equal negative 8. k, therefore, has got to equal a positive 2. Another way you could have done this is using the idea that our function evaluated at negative 4 has to equal 5. So this function evaluated at negative 4. So negative 4 squared plus k times by a negative 4 minus 3 has got to equal 5. So I have 16 minus 4k minus 3 has got to equal 5. This math looks super familiar. So I got two both ways that I did it. Okay, so utilizing, solving the problem two different ways. Okay, there's your lesson question. Make sure you determine whether or not it's a factor, and then try and factor if it is, in fact, a factor.